Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, I have decided to revisit AMD's Ryzen 3 3300X. And for those of you who missed it, AMD's third gen Ryzen 3 series was released a little over two months ago now. And apart from our day one coverage, we haven't really produced any follow-up content that focuses specifically on these new CPUs. And that is a little surprising given how impressed I was with them. But then I guess the CPU release was somewhat overshadowed by AMD's decision at the time to act support for all 400 series motherboards moving forward. If you followed that drama, you'll know we spent quite a bit of time and energy fighting AMD on that one and eventually helped to get them walk back that decision. And then by the time that was resolved, we were moving on to other content like Intel's 10th gen core series. And then we had a whole heap of Z490 motherboards to test out and that sort of morphed into B550 motherboard testing though that is largely on hold now until stock arrives. Anyway, I'd always planned to return to some detailed Ryzen 3 testing and I began laying the groundwork for this GPU scaling content many weeks ago now. The timing though, it hasn't been great. Stock is virtually non-existent and therefore I've just been sitting on the data. I've asked AMD when these CPUs will be back in stock, but given all the uncertainty at the moment, they can't really give me an answer. So not sure when you'll be able to buy a 3100 or 3300X. And unfortunately, as I said, I just can't tell you that. At this point, I've just given up waiting for stock to return though. I'm not gonna delay the blue bar graphs any longer. So I guess when they eventually come back in stock, you'll be armed with even more information. For this test, I'm comparing the 3300X with the Ryzen 5 3600 and Ryzen 5 2600. In past GPU scaling benchmarks, I've also tested the Ryzen 9 3900X and Core i9 1900K, though those CPUs will be largely absent from the testing here in an effort to declutter the graphs. But I will call on some of that data towards the end of the video. So let's get into it. For testing, all CPUs were paired with G-Skills Flarex DDR4-3200CL14 memory, and the cooler used was Corsair's H115i Pro. Any auto overclocking features such as MC or PBO have been disabled and the memory hasn't been tuned in any way, just XMP loaded. So it's pretty much out of the box performance with a quality AIO and some low latency memory. Please note the test setup here is a bit different to the setup used in our recent CPU reviews and that will influence the results. Here we're using just two memory modules for single rank operation, whereas our newer CPU reviews feature four DIMM modules for dual ranked memory. Also, some of the areas used for testing the games have also been updated, but since I already have the GPU scaling data for the Ryzen 5 2600 and 3600, it's a bit of a waste of time starting all over again just to add the 3300X to this data set. Anyway, just wanted to make you aware of that. Let's jump into the results. Starting with Assassin's Creed Odyssey using the medium quality preset at 1080p, we find that the 3300X is positioned between the 2600 and 3600 when using the RTX 2080 Ti, making the 3600 around 15% faster. However, dropping down to the RTX 2070 Super eliminates that margin almost entirely. Now the 3600 is just a single frame faster. The 3300X was still 11% faster than the 2600 though, so a decent lead over the second gen part. By the time we hit the Radeon RX 5700 though, we're looking at very similar performance for all three processors. Here the 3300X was only 5% faster than the 2600 and just 2% slower than the 3600 as we've become almost entirely GPU limited. Then once we drop down to the Radeon RX 580, we're now entirely GPU limited and the results seen here are largely within the margin of error. Needless to say, you won't spot any differences between the 3600 and 3300X when gaming under these conditions. Now, if we increase the quality preset a few notches to the maximum setting, we find unsurprisingly that the results become far more GPU bound. And remember, we're still only testing at 1080p. Really though, it doesn't matter what kind of graphics card you have, RX 580, 570, 2070 Super, or even the 2080 Ti, you'll be looking at virtually identical frame rates with any of the CPUs tested here. Now, here we're again looking at results using the medium quality preset, but this time the testing takes place at the 1440p resolution, and when compared to the 1080p data, these results are significantly more GPU limited with the GeForce GPUs. The 3300X and 3600, for example, deliver identical, or virtually identical performance using all four GPUs, making them a little faster than the Ryzen 5 2600. Then finally, we have the Assassin's Creed Odyssey results using the ultra high preset at 1440p, and no surprises here, we're again almost entirely GPU bound. So if you plan on playing this title and titles like it with maximum quality settings, even with a 3300X, you're mostly going to find the system is GPU bound. 
Moving on to the Far Cry New Dawn testing, and here we find a similar average frame rate performance between the 3300X and 3600, but the 6-core processor does deliver better 1% low results, suggesting we're getting slightly more consistent performance with the higher-end CPU. It's also interesting to note that although slower for both the average and 1% low results, the Ryzen 5 2600 sees just a 23% variation between the two metrics, whereas the 3300X sees up to a 29% difference, again suggesting that the experience won't be quite as smooth on the quad-core processor. Interestingly, using the Radeon RX 5700, the 3300X's average frame rate does fall away from the 3600. We've found in the past that AMD's drivers produce more overhead, so perhaps that's what we're seeing here. And by the time we drop down to the RX 580, things have started to come together once more. But even here, we do see that the slight increased latency of the Zen Plus architecture is a bit of a problem for the 2600. And we find more interesting Far Cry New Dawn results at 1080p when increasing the preset quality to Ultra. This appears to increase the CPU load as here the 3300X is now up to 10% slower than the 3600 when comparing the average frame rate. We also see a substantial drop off for the 2600 when comparing the 1% low data. The performance trends for the RX 5700, 2070 Super and 2080 Ti all look much the same and it's not until we drop down to the RX 580 that we see a coming together of the data. Now for the 1440p results using the normal quality settings, and when compared to what was seen at 1080p, we now see less of a difference between the 3300X and 3600 when using the RX 5700, and we also see a significant difference in performance between the RX 5700 and RX 580. And of course this is due to the game being more GPU limited at the higher resolution. Then finally, here's the 1440p ultra quality data, and here we're now seeing a very little difference between the 3300X and 3600 using even the RTX 2080 Ti. At 1080p, the 3600 was up to 10% faster. Here that margin though has been halved to just 5%. Next up we have Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, and again we'll start with the 1080p medium quality data, though the medium type quality preset here is labelled as high. Anyway, we have some more interesting data. With the RTX 2080 Ti, the 3600 is just 4% faster than the 3300X when comparing the average frame rate, but 14% faster when comparing the 1% lows. As a result, the 3600 sees a 27% performance disparity between its average and 1% low figures, while the 3300X sees an almost 40% disparity. Once again, suggesting that the 6-core processor is delivering a smoother, more consistent gaming experience. The difference is somewhat neutralized with the slower RTX 2070 Super, and in fact here the 3300X produces a tighter grouping of frames due to a stronger GPU bottleneck. We see this effect continue as we lower the GPU horsepower, and by the time we get to the RX 580, there's no difference to be seen. If we increase the quality preset to Ultra while still maintaining the 1080p resolution, we find with GPUs such as the RTX 2070 Super, Radeon RX 5700 and RX 580 that the 3300X and 3600 deliver the same level of performance as both are heavily GPU limited. In fact, it's not until we use the RTX 2080 Ti that some difference in performance can be seen. Although the average frame rate is still much the same, the 3600 is now 11% faster when comparing the 1% low data. However, we see an even bigger hit to performance by simply increasing the resolution. Now at 1440p using the high quality settings, the RTX 2080 Ti has dropped down to just under 200 FPS with the Ryzen 5 3600. As a result, we see very little performance difference between the tested processors. The 3600 is a few percent faster with the RTX 2080 Ti, and then we see identical performance with the 2070 Super. Again, we see the RX 5700 causing some overhead issues, but again, we're talking about low single digit differences in performance. For those of you gaming at 1440p using ultra type quality settings, we see more evidence that the CPU for the most part doesn't matter too much, as you're almost always going to be GPU bound. And again, we see that it really is impossible to distinguish between any of the CPUs used here, and the 3300X was capable of maintaining well over 100 FPS at all times with the RTX 2080 Ti. The last game we're going to look at is World War Z, and here we find a scenario that is almost entirely CPU limited. Testing at 1080p with the medium quality preset sees virtually no performance difference between the 2080 Ti, 2070 Super, and even the RX 5700, while the RX 580 isn't far behind. In all this data, the 3300X was up to 11% slower than the 3600 with similar margins between the average and 1% low data. So it's important to note that while the 3600 is clearly faster here, the gaming experience wasn't any better, at least not to a degree that you'd actually notice.
even when stepping up to the ultra quality settings, we see virtually the same results as even here, we're still mostly CPU limited. The 1440p medium quality results really aren't that different either, though we start to see the 3300X and 3600 come together with the Radeon RX 5700. In fact, it's not until we test at 1440p with the ultra quality settings that the game finally starts to become a little more GPU bound. And here we're now seeing similar performance from the 3300X and 3600 with the RTX 2070 Super. Okay, so we've now checked out the results across the four games tested. And again, I know four games, not a whole lot. We usually like to test with many more than four games, but because of the formatting of these GPU scaling comparisons, adding more games is just really not feasible. We're looking at over 300 benchmark runs just to add the Ryzen 3 3300X to this data set. The games used, they do cover quite a range of performance scenarios though, so there is that. Should give you a pretty good idea of how these processes compare in yeah, a range of games, as I said. And that being the case, I think we should probably dive into the average performance. I'll also be adding the Ryzen 9 3900X and the Core i9 9900K to the data. Starting with the 1080p medium data, we see when using the fastest available GPU at the moment that the Ryzen 5 3600 is on average 11% faster than the 3300X when comparing the 1% low data. And that's a reasonable performance uplift, but when you consider that we're talking about a 50% increase in core count, it's really not that significant. Moreover, the 3300X can be seen delivering an average 1% low figure of 120 FPS, so that is quite a few frames. Now, if you're not using an RTX 2080 Ti and instead have a $500 US graphics card like the RTX 2070 Super, then that 11% margin shrinks to just 4%, though it does increase a little bit to 6% with the RX 5700. Then once we drop down to the RX 580, there's no margin to speak of. Now, if we increase the resolution to 1440p while still using the medium quality settings, we see that the 3600 is now just 5% faster than the 3300X with the RTX 2080 Ti. Similar margins are also seen with the RTX 2070 Super and RX 5700. Looking at the ultra quality preset testing, we see pretty typical scaling as we go down the GPU stack. With the RTX 2080 Ti, the 3600 is 8% faster than the 3300X when looking at the 1% low data, then 6% faster with the RTX 2070 Super, and just 5% faster with the Radeon RX 5700. Now, here is a look at the 1440p ultra data, probably the most realistic data for someone rocking a high-end graphics card like an RTX 2070 Super or RTX 2080 Ti. Here we're looking at just a 5% difference between the 3600 and 3300X. And that means in the games just tested, the 1% low performance of the Ryzen 9 3900X was just 11% better than the 3300X. And those margins shrink quite considerably with the RTX 2070 Super. Here the 3600 was just 3% faster than the 3300X, while virtually no difference can be seen with the Radeon RX 5700. Two months ago, I called the Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X the new budget champions. And since then, Intel has released their new 10th gen core series, which includes the Core i3 range. But I think it's fair to say those parts have failed to dethrone Ryzen 3. The only problem with that being that you can buy a Core i3 10100 right now, but you're very unlikely to find a 3300X anywhere, particularly at a price that's even remotely close to that $130 MSRP. So the fact that the 3100 and 3300X have been out of stock for weeks now is obviously very disappointing. And as I said earlier in the video, it's very unclear as to when stock will return. Of course, right now we are seeing stock shortages for a whole host of PC parts. So it's not just the 3300X. So we can't give AMD a hard time. This global pandemic has really messed everything up. And obviously, as I said, we're seeing stock shortages of you name it, motherboards, power supplies, even things like cases in some instances. Anyway, unless stock levels were high prior to going into 2020, there's a good chance the products are either overpriced or simply unavailable entirely. The Ryzen 5 3600, as an example, that went on sale midway through last year, 2019, and with demand expected to be high for that part, and of course it was, you can rest assured that AMD was spitting them out as fast as they possibly could, and that allowed them to build up a sizable inventory, and then now able to burn through that inventory. As a result, the 3600 is not only still available today, but it's available at a discounted price, typically selling for around $170 US, down from the $200 US MSRP. And that makes the 3600 the cheapest Zen 2 based processor you can buy right now. 
And I guess the question is, if the Ryzen 3 3300X was available at the $130 US MSRP, and it could very well be by the time this goes live, though I'm not particularly confident about that, but if it were available at $130 US, should you buy it for gaming? It is a quad core after all, and those are useless for gaming, aren't they? Well, as I explained in our video last year titled, Are Quad Cores Finally Dead in 2019? It depends on a few things. Firstly, we found that four core, four thread quad core processors struggled in a number of modern titles, often suffering from weak frame time performance that led to a noticeably poor gaming experience. However, four core eight thread processors like the 3300X featuring SMT technology are much better in that regard and generally avoid stuttery performance in modern titles, which is why processors like the Core i7 4970K, 6700K and 7700K still work quite well even today, whereas the Core i5 equivalents don't. Another big consideration is obviously the price. The Core i7 7700K, for example, that commanded a $340 US asking price back in 2017, a questionable price at the time that would be truly laughable today, given you can buy an 8-core Zen 2 processor for less. But if the 7700K was $130 today, or we had a Core i3 10100K, it would be a remarkably good buy for budget gamers, and this is what we're getting with a 3300X. And I mean, sure, 1% low performance might not always be as consistent as what you get with the Ryzen 5 3600, but it's still the best level of performance you can get from a brand new processor at this price point. But with the 3600 dropping down to just $175 US, you're faced with saving just $45 US when opting for the 3300X. That's only a 25% saving and you're taking a 33% cut to the core count. But as you just saw in a lot of instances, the impact on gaming performance is much smaller than either of those figures. Basically, if you're looking at upgrading an old system and you want to save as much money as possible on the motherboard CPU and memory combo, the ability to still save $45 US on the CPU is a pretty big deal, especially if in most instances you won't actually notice the performance difference. Even when compared to a class leading gaming CPU like the Core i9-1900K, or now the Core i7-10700K, in a lot of games the Ryzen 3 3300X really isn't that much slower. Especially if you're talking about realistic gaming conditions, so not an RTX 2080 Ti at 1080p using medium quality settings. For example, while the 3300X was up to 20% slower than the 1900K at 1080p using the medium quality preset with the RTX 2080 Ti, that margin shrunk to just 13% with the ultra quality settings and then 12% at 1440p, where it still enabled over 100 FPS on average. All of that said, if you can afford to step up to the Ryzen 5 3600, then I suggest you do. It's no secret that the 3300X is right on the edge, and while still great value, there's a potential for four core eight thread processors to become problematic down the track. The not too distant future, let's say. And it's far more obvious to me that the 3600 will become noticeably better than the 3300X within the next few years. Whereas I'm doubtful we'll see the same thing with the 3700X versus the 3600, for example. I still think we're a while off six core 12 thread processors not cutting it for gamers, regardless of how many cores the new consoles have. And on that note, I am going to end this one. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. You can also subscribe for more content like this. And if you'd like to support the work we do at Harum Box and also get more involved with the channel, get access to our exclusive Discord chat where you can talk with the awesome Harder Box community. We have a monthly live stream for Patreon members only, which we just did. You can go back and watch previous ones. There's some pretty cool information in there that we don't share on the main channel. So that's worth checking out if you're interested. Uh, behind the scenes videos, they're always interesting and fun. Uh, what else we got? Q&As. If you're interested, link for the Patreon account is in the video description, so check that out. But if not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching the video, especially if you made it to this point. But yeah, that is going to do it for this one. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.